Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode. Beautiful sunny day here. Yesterday was the day I shot the mini episode, the racing uh, video with Santari and the weather was terrible, like such heavy rain from start to finish and I think more is coming tomorrow, but look at this. So today I decided there's a couple of bits I wanna do on my Land Rover. Right, so the first, well the major thing that I've wanted to change is I'm not sure if you can see in there but the rocker cover is rocker cover gasket is leaking badly and it seems to be leaking from mainly the front and this side and I cleaned the engine with engine cleaner a couple of weeks ago when I got this Land Rover and in that time I've been driving it it's obviously leaked but I wanted to clean it first just to detect that it was definitely coming from that gasket. So that I need to change. And while I'm at it, I think it's a good idea to change the oil. So, the I've just driven to the shop to buy some oil. So I'll show you what I got. I had a little research online and they recommended for this engine, which is a two and a quarter diesel, this 15W40 uh, for diesel engines, mineral oil. So I went for this Delvac, which is specifically for diesel engines. Uh, I have a oil filter, which I'm hoping is the right one. It came with a bundle of stuff with the car and also a gasket kit. So there's two in here and from looking at them there, slightly different so I think one may be for the petrol version and the other one hopefully is for this diesel version so first things first is to drop the oil so because I've just been on a I don't know it's probably 15 20 minute drive the engine is nice and warm and if we look under here um, the drain plug is just there so we're gonna crack open that drain the oil and then I don't know if you can see up there that is the oil filter so it has like a metal housing it's not like the more modern oil filters where they're just like a, a canister uh, this is a paper filter that fits inside of that canister so you take that off but I'll show you later but I mean I had a, a bit of a inspection under here and it looks as though that's not the only place where it's leaking it becomes quite obvious that that's not the only area that it's leaking from I mean uh, it looks like it's pretty much leaking from anywhere and everywhere it possibly can but I think I'd be worried if it wasn't leaking because uh, it's a Land Rover and it's supposed to do that, right? Plus, if it wasn't leaking, it had would have run out of oil. So that's also a good sign. So all positives all round. So there you can see a bit more clearly was where the drain plug is. And it's a 13, 16 spanner. And the great thing about this Land Rover is that I don't have to jack it up. There's enough room under here just to drain it from here. Okay, so while that is still draining, I'll just leave that out for for while I do this process. So you can see up there quite clearly the oil filter and on the end there uh, is where you put your spanner to loosen it. And that is a bolt that goes all the way through the middle of this and screws into the housing there. So this is a 5 8 spanner and we're just gonna loosen that off. There'll be a bit of oil and the whole thing should come off. So as you can see, I've just loosened it off. I'll let it drain out pretty much until it stops and then continue loosening it. 
So what do we have here then? Right, so this is the housing for the filter. Inside of there, I don't know if you can see, the sun is quite bright. Um, there's a spring and uh, this disc on the end which slots into the end of the filter and puts tension on it when you tighten it up so it seals it. And the filter has a rubber seal either end as well. So, the, I, I just noticed after I've taken it off, there's actually a drain plug and that looks like it's been added afterwards, I would think, unless that is original Land Rover welding, I'm not sure, but I didn't use it, so I, I just undid that, so no biggie. And here we have the new filter. I don't know if that part number corresponds with all the other brands, but let's double check that it's the same size. So it's the same diameter and it's the same height. So this actually has paper gasket on each end, but pretty much the same thing. And also what's very important is all the filters come with a new seal. And what's even more important is you don't forget to take the old one off of the housing that this screws into. Otherwise you're gonna have two rubber seals and it won't seal. So you'll start your engine up and oil will, yeah, it'll piss out everywhere basically. So I'm now gonna go and remove that old seal and put this one in place. Also good practice is, is that you smear new engine oil on the new rubber uh, seal and that will make it seal better against this. Okay, so I just gave it a bit of a clean up around here and it's in this channel here where the seal sits. So I just went and got this prick and hopefully, there we go, easy as that. So I'll put the new one in. So the new seal, smear a bit of the old good old Delvac on here. Not much, just a bit. Moisten it up like that. You do the same with the normal style oil filters as well. Always put a bit of oil on the seal around the top. There's the spring in position. New filter. There's no top or bottom, but the text is at the top. Just if you want to be fussy. And clean off this edge, which seals against that new big O-ring. And then it's just the exact opposite of taking it off okay so now the sump has almost dripped its last drop i have put a new copper washer on the sump plug and i'm going to use a little bit of this worth pipe sealant just because i am okay so next up before i put the oil back in i think i'm going to do this um, gasket first uh, for no reason really because obviously all the oil goes to the bottom anyway so it's not like it's going to affect it but I'm going to do it this way around. Um, also what, right, I need to take this intake pipe off which is connected to the air filter box which is here. Right, there is the canister out of the car. Right. So it's in two halves as I can see. Oil must sit in the bottom, filter must be in this piece. But this is all new to me, never done this before, so I'm learning as you're learning. So I'm gonna crack this bad boy open and see what's inside. It just has these three clips on the bottom. OK, 
Okay. So there's the gauze filters. There's actually one there and there's one in here as well. Oh, look, there's actually a nut on the top. So that's probably holding that in. I'll put some WD-40 on there and let it soak. And then I guess this, yeah, this comes out, look. So I'll give this a clean with some brake cleaner. You can see it's caught up some twigs and stuff in there. So we'll just give that a blast. And then if I move the camera, you can see that inside it's full of oil. So I'm gonna empty that out, clean it, and clean all of this gunk off the outside. And then, um, put fresh oil in and put it back together. Santor has just turned up in his race car. And he just informed me that in the owner's manual, Land Rover's owner's manual, it says that you should change this oil and clean your air filter once a week. And judging by this color of this oil, look. Yeah, that wasn't changed last week. Well, I didn't change it last week. I don't think it was changed. Jeez, look at that. Look at the sludge in the bottom. Well, that's good. We'll give it a good, whoops. We'll give it a good clean out and uh, put it all back together. Man, that's disgusting, look. Damn. Right, I've cleaned this out. Uh, left some brake cleaner in the bottom there just to soak some of the more stubborn bits and pieces out. Uh, I cleaned the other filter that sits in here with some brake cleaner as well. I just left that over soaking. I sprayed a bit of rusty rear on this. Um, oh, look at that. Comes off nice. Apart from the last little bit. Okay, this is where we stand. This is all nice and clean now. All the gunk is out. Uh, I have sprayed this with brake cleaner and compressed air. A lot of dirt came out. I took this lid off the top of this and that's all that there is. So this tube looks like it goes all the way through to the top where that nut was, but there's also a cork seal around here that mates up with this, but it's really stuck in there. So I'm not gonna chance um, ruin and putting it back together and getting running so I'm gonna see if I can order a new seal kit or something like that and then I will take this out and do a proper cleaning job even though like this is a weld better than it was so oil back in back together and let's crack on with taking the rocker cover off right with the pipe intake pipe out the way uh, you can clearly see that there's three nuts holding this on. We can pull that out the way. Um, maybe, I think that will be fine where it is. This is actually stuck, I think. This is for the heater control. I do have a spare one, but I won't change it today because I have to probably drain some. Well, it'd be good to then drain the coolant. And there's a pipe down here, it's a bit dodgy looking. Look, it's leaking a bit of coolant. So I'll do that at the same time, but um, so I think I just need to undo those three and this probably pulls off somehow. Yeah. Okay, got that off, and there's the seal. It was leaking all the way along this side. I think probably it's just old and got flat. The nuts were quite loose as well, so that could have contributed to it. So I'll clean this whole thing up and then we'll put a new cork gasket on this. So I just laid over, laid the old gasket over the new one that's still in the packet just to make sure I have the right 
gasket for the job and I do so that's good and Santor is here just sorting out some electrical problems the wiper motor isn't working but we got the lights to work so we're one step in the right direction and you're just going to go and get the tires now so two things that need to be done before race day. Is Wiper that right? And death tires. Yeah. And there is actually uh, just one of the belts have been changed, so I have to. Oh yeah, the belts need the belt to be changed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And going to clean it a bit. But Santa is probably not going to test tomorrow because apparently there's a it's lot more raining. rain coming. Not much good with no wiper unless you put lots of Rain-X on there. Yeah. But you need the wiper for the, uh, what's it called, Inspect not inspection, but the yeah. regulations or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The rules say so. Yeah, the rules. It's the rules. It's all Western. <laughs> so, pretty simple. This has a sticky back to it, so you just peel off the paper and then it sticks to the rocker cover so you always stick it this way around it's a little bit off there but it should be okay when it flattens down uh, make sure both uh, surfaces are clean and there's no like debris on there like bits sticking out that it's nice and flat same as on the head of the engine i just went around and cleaned it and everything's clean so i just basically pop this on uh, if you don't have this sticky back you can use the aviation sealer and put a little bit around the rocker cover lip and then you just glue your gasket on just makes life so much easier when you're putting this on it's not falling over and plus when you tighten this down sometimes it can like squash out and then it doesn't seal There's a little, of a little bit of a wiggle to get on, but it's on there, look. This is probably a little too over the top, but I got some copper washers and I'm going to use a little bit of this Permatex aviation uh, gasket just on drip down the threads. There we go, nice and snug. Haven't gone too crazy. There's probably, well, there is a torque setting, I would think, for these, but I didn't bother. I just snugged them up, not too tight, but snug. Uh, so I just have to put this... Uh, oil filter sorry air filter housing pod thing back in i'll clean all this up first because it's pretty shocking uh, this wing nut is stuck so i'm going to try and sorry you can't see it this actually broke off this brass wing nut i had to like clamp the thing together to get it off so i'm going to try and get that off maybe just put a nylock on there um, but we're getting back together and i think yeah, dipstick is here. So fill up the oil from here. As you can see, that pipe goes down to the side of the engine. Coolant is here, so don't put it in there. Alrighty, let's put this back together. Right, we're almost there, girls and boys. So I put this back in, put a nylock nut on there to hold it in place. I put the heater um cable back on take on off the cap for uh, the oil filler got the old delvac ready i think when i uh looked up online that it said it was almost eight liters so i have exactly eight liters so i think it was something i don't know 7.6 but we'll see and there's the dipstick there to check the oil level so let's glug some in shall we guys if you uh, if you empty it like this no air can get in to let the oil out and it glugs and it will spill everywhere so now you're going to watch me probably spill it everywhere aren't you I should get a funnel but I'm lazy yeah. dripped a little bit but hey so you see it flows a lot better this way around OK, 
Okay, oh, there's the first four. Right, so I've put about seven liters in there, and um, I'm going to check the dip dipstick just to see if it shows at all. I don't want to trust the what I read because I might have got the wrong information, and I don't want to overfill it because then I have to drain some off. So, as you can see on the dipstick, I think you can. Can you? I don't know if that's in focus. Um, you have high and low and minimum. Okay, so it's actually showing that there's too much in there. And the reason is, or one of the reasons, is that you have to pump the oil around the engine. Uh, because obviously everything's drained out, we drained the oil filter, that's empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up, let everything circulate and then we will recheck it and in that meantime hopefully we can detect whether this uh, new gasket is leaking right let's start up the beast So I ran it up for a bit, I checked underneath, I made sure I made sure the sump plug wasn't leaking, I made sure the oil filter wasn't leaking. So now it's run up for a little bit. Uh, I'll check the oil pressure as well, there's an oil pressure gauge, an aftermarket one that's been fitted to this. And we have oil pressure, so that's good. So now I'll double check the oil level and top it up. Okay, so I just dipped it. And as you can see, it's actually a little bit higher than the um, high level mark, um, but it should be okay. I think um, I'll double check it uh, when I get home, I think, just to double check the level. So there we have it, we're done, ready to go. So what did we cover today? Uh, engine oil change, rocker cover gasket change, air filter oil bath cleaning and change the oil. Um, yeah, the oil filter changed, so actually quite a lot. So, like I said before, and I'll say it again, thanks ever so much for watching. Yeah, this is great. Uh, one thing I'll mention before I end this video is, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I did a rear cross member corner repair, and I painted it with a, a gloss um, paint, because that's all I had and I said I was going to just rub it down a little bit to take the shine off because it didn't match the rest of the rear beam but now look at it it's perfect you wouldn't even know it's been repaired right I'm super happy brilliant okay thanks guys until the next one cheers <laughs> <laughs>